In this video, I want to talk about the importance of being able to play all over the fretboard, whether it's with chords or with single note playing and soloing. And this is a really important step, I think, particularly if you're the kind of player who wants to make the jump towards becoming more advanced. And you don't just want to be locked into one or two comfortable positions on the fretboard. You want to be able to go wherever you like and to express yourself without any limitations. So I'm going to be looking at the way that I understand the fretboard and the way that I organise my harmonic and melodic materials. I'm going to be talking about the caged system and the idea of dividing up the fretboard into five different zones and also going to be talking about the importance of having something to say in each of those five different zones. So we're going to be looking at some licks and some vocabulary as well. So I'm going to begin by playing something which I hope is going to demonstrate this concept. I've got a little backing track and I'm going to start down here and just work my way up through the different fretboard zones. I'm going to be playing some kind of Hendrixy R&B style licks but the kind of concepts I want to talk about in this video you can apply to any style of music really. So let's get started. Okay, let's discuss what's going on here and let's start with the caged system and as I said I do tend to understand the fretboard in terms of caged and I know there are some other ways of seeing the fretboard and I have explored those and dabbled in them but for me caged has always made the most sense and I know that caged has got its critics but they've never been particularly convincing to me and caged is really just the way that the guitar fretboard is it's the fact that we've got this tuning and six strings and four fingers on our fretting and it just makes sense to organize the fretboard into these five different zones so that you can play all over the fretboard. Now this isn't going to be a full-on caged lesson there are plenty of those elsewhere on the internet but I will just briefly take you through my approach and then the bulk of this video I want to spend on looking at some licks and vocabulary in each of these caged positions. So we're going to do this in the key of G and I'm going to start down at this end of the fretboard and in terms of the caged system this is the E form and just for those of you who are completely unaware of this stuff caged is the idea of having five zones of the fretboard and they're based on characteristics of our simple open position chords so C, A, G, E and D and you can move those chords up the fretboard make movable shapes and then if you like you can strip away some of the notes leaving you with just octave shapes and for me the octave shapes is the key thing the octave shapes are the framework on which you can hang all of the other stuff and you can really organize any chord any arpeggio any kind of scale around those caged octave shapes so I want to do this in the key of G major we're just going to be talking about major chords today you can expand this approach and apply it to other chord types as well now around that chord, around that octave shape, I can organize all of my G major stuff. It might be chords, it might be scales, arpeggios, it can be licks, vocabulary, it can be stuff I will use for rhythm guitar or for lead guitar or when I'm combining the two things. So all of that information is kind of mashed together in my brain and organized in this one area of the fretboard. So we've got our octave shape and then we've got our major chord and you might like to learn a major arpeggio the root third and fifth just played in order and you've got 
various different scales which would work over a G major chord. You've got your major pentatonic scale. And you've got your major scale. And you could have other scales which will work over a major chord, the Mixolydian scale, for example, uh, or even the, the Lydian mode. So all of that I can see, I can visualize around this octave shape and around this chord shape. So that's the essence of my system of organizing all of this information. And it is a lot of information. If this is all new to you, um, you want to take your time learning all of this stuff. But uh, ultimately, it makes it a lot easier to learn all of this information because I'm grouping a lot of this stuff together. So if some of that information is new to you, you might just like to make that part of your practice routine and just gradually start getting some of that stuff under your fingers. But for this particular video, I want to move on to the licks and just having something to say in this zone of the fretboard. And I've just got a couple of licks in each caged zone. And these are kind of Hendrixy R&B style licks, but they don't have to be. They could be just about anything. And you might like to learn my licks, but then I want to encourage you to come up with some ideas and licks of your own. So the first lick goes like this. Very Hendrixy sound with this one and it's based on double stops. We're starting with this A and D double stop shape and then I'm using my third finger to play this B note and just pulling off, coming down to our G root and then going back to that double stop idea. Very simple idea but you can get a lot of mileage out of that idea by playing it in different rhythms and just varying it slightly and it's important that you see how that relates to our chord shape you can see that it's centered on our caged chord and our octave shape and it's mostly chord tones here we've got our root third and fifth but we're including this A note here which is the second That is idea number one. And then another idea I've got goes like this. We've got, again, very Hendrixy coming out of that chord shape. So double stop on the top two strings, hammering down on this E. And then a little triplet here, a hammer on and a pull off, coming down to the B and then stop here and hammering down on this C note, pulling off and then down to the root. And again lots of variations you can find on that particular lick and in terms of the intervals here you've got the chord shape and in addition to that we've got this note here the E which is the sixth we're adding this note as well which is the fourth so you've got that kind of sus4 sound there and you can see those notes as just being additions or embellishments to the chord shape or you can think about them as coming from the key each of those extra notes are from the G major scale so you've got the, the fourth there and the six as well. The sixth is in the major pentatonic and the full major scale. Let's move on to the next caged zone of the fretboard. So we've got this zone here. This is the E form. And next we've got the D form. So just following the letters in the word caged. So the D form, we've got a chord shape, which you could play like this or perhaps like this. And then the octave shape, got the root notes there. So five on the D and eight on the B and around that we can organize our melodic materials as well. So you've got your arpeggio, your major pentatonic and your major scale. So all of that stuff, just seeing that, visualizing it around the octave shape. And let's have some vocabulary, some licks in this position. So I've got a couple of 
examples. The first one goes like this. So, simple phrase. In this cage position, you've got the major pentatonic scale. It's got this nice kind of box shape on the lowest three strings. So I'm just playing around that shape. I'm just giving that note a little bit of a bend, the, the seventh fret on the D string. That's the first lick, and then the next one goes like this. So playing this on the top two strings, and I've got my root and, and third here, the, the G and the B, and I'm also playing this A note here, so got that kind of sound. So holding down the G, going between the A and the B, you've got that nice kind of major second sound going to the major third. Uh, major pentatonic based, I suppose, this phrase. So just a very simple phrase, but a useful one and something you can explore and improvise with just by changing the rhythm and altering some of the notes slightly. Moving on to the next caged zone, and this is the C form. So remember, all of this is in the key of G. These are all G chords, but uh, moving through the different shapes which we're relating to those open position chord shapes so this is a G chord in the C form and once again you've got your octave shape and you can organize all of your other material around that octave shape I'm not going to go through all of that right now but I suggest you explore the arpeggio the major pentatonic the major scale and maybe some other scales around that octave shape as well and as far as vocabulary goes again I've got a couple of quite classic sounding Hendrix style licks and it's interesting to me how each of these caged zones has a different kind of feeling different characteristics and certain phrases seem to flow really well in certain positions and then other positions um, different kinds of phrases and melodies will work but this one seems to just fall very naturally under the fingers and the first phrase i've got goes like this double stops here and really just embellishing the the chord shape so starting with this a little double stop on the G and the B so we've got a D and a G note and putting the third finger down on this E and then moving on to the next pair of strings got that kind of idea so nine to seven on the D and we're holding down this seventh fret note on the G Coming down to that root note, just having to reach over for that with your pinky, with your little finger. And then back to our double stop on the middle two strings. So so that's our lick. And then the next one goes like this. Hendrixy double stops. I'm on the middle pair of strings to start with. And got that again, it's a nice dissonant kind of major second sound we've got here. So sliding from B to C, and I'm holding down this D note on the third string. So and you can slide or use a hammer on and a pull off. Coming down the, the major pentatonic scale, really. And then it's quite a nice move there, just going between the double stop and the root note, and ending by hammering onto that B. Next up, we're into this shape here. This is the A form, so we've got our octave shape here and in this position again I want to have some vocabulary some stuff that I can do whether it's for soloing or for fills and rhythm guitar purposes so once again a couple of phrases here the first phrase goes like this
So, so I'm starting with a double stop on the top two strings and putting down my third finger on this B note here and pulling off, coming down to the root and then just going between the double stop and that G note and ending with another one of these Hendrixy hammer-ons. So the whole lick. Next one goes like this. So more of a country style bending lick this one. So I'm bending this B note here up to a C sharp and then I'm catching this high D. So uh, apologies for the tuning here. I've got my tremolo kind of floating here. So when I bend the, the top string tends to go a little bit flat. But to try and get that as in tune as you can. So you're bending and you're catching that top D note. And then coming down out of the bend. And then I'm finishing just with some stuff from the major pentatonic scale. So you could really end that lick however you like, but that's the way that I've decided to do it. Last up then we've got the G form and this is the one up here. The chord shape is actually really awkward to play that kind of G bar chord shape. But it's not really about that chord shape. It's more about the characteristics of that chord shape and the octave shape. And we're using that as a way of organizing this other material. So the octave shape is this kind of triangle shape. I think of it as a kind of backwards triangle shape. Again, you're going to want to find your arpeggio, your major pentatonic, major scale, other related scales in that position, and then explore the character of this zone of the fretboard and come up with some licks and some vocabulary. And I've got, again, a couple of suggestions for you in this particular zone of the neck. And the first one goes like this. Very Hendrixy this one. It really works well this position for those kind of Hendrixy ideas. You've got your major pentatonic shape right there under your fingers, and you can use your first finger for the double stop, and then your third finger to hammer on on each pair of strings. So that's really all that's going on here. We've got so starting on the B and the G, coming over onto the G and the D down the major pentatonic scale and ending with this kind of hammer on from A to B on the fifth string. Then for my final lick I've got this. Tuning is a bit dodgy with this floating tram. It's this kind of country bending idea. So 15 on the B string and then catching 15 on the top string. And then a similar idea on the next pair of strings. And ending with this idea here. So hammering on from 14 to 15. It's that kind of fourth in there, that sus4 sound. So there we are. Hope you find some of those licks useful. And the big idea here really is just to have something to say in each of those caged zones. So no matter where you are on the fretboard, you've got some kind of melodic and harmonic materials. So uh, you might like to learn my licks or I really would encourage you to come up with some ideas of your own. If you're not into some of my licks, then uh, it's actually not that hard to uh, noodle around in these positions and come up with some ideas. So I really want to encourage you to do that as well. And then I suggest trying to get some of these ideas into your playing, into some kind of context. And that's what I was trying to do at the start of this video. I just had a very simple chord progression. It was just a G going down to an F. And I was playing some of these ideas on the G chord and then just moving them down to frets so that they fitted the F chord. So, so my G idea and then moving that down to fit the 
F chords. So that's something you might like to experiment with also. Briefly today, the gear that I'm using, and I was thinking Hendrix a little bit today, so I've gone with my Strat. And this is, I think, an American vintage Strat. It's kind of a vintage reissue Strat. Amp-wise, I'm using my Fender Princeton, and I've got an overdrive pedal as well. Today, it's the Nobles ODR-1 Natural Overdrive. And I've had this pedal for a while, but I've not actually used it that much. And I bought it sort of on the strength of all of the reviews and people on the internet saying how amazing this thing was. And I got it and yeah, it sounded good, but uh, I still preferred most of the time my Klon style pedal, the, the Rocket Archer. But today I was just experimenting, going between the, the Klon and the Nobles. And I thought the Nobles actually worked really well with the Strat into the Fender Princeton. And I preferred the sound of that today. So that is that. I will, of course, be notating all of this stuff. I'm going to tab out all of the licks that I just discussed. I'll also try and tab out my introductory improvisation in case some of you want to learn that or just steal one or two ideas. All of that stuff is going to be up on my Patreon page and I'll put the backing track up there as well. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time.